and welcome to this Pilates based exercise warm up sequence. We're going to be doing a few uh, squat movements today or plie movements as we might say in Pilates more, um, some balance and mobility exercises. If you have any joint problems or injuries uh, or conditions that could be made worse through exercise, then please consult with your physician or physiotherapist prior to beginning this practice. Let's start by aligning the body. We're going to look for more or less a two fist distance between the feet so that our legs are aligned with the pelvis. And then from there, we're going to consider the alignment of the spine. To help us with aligning the spine, we'll allow the knees to bend, so absorbing strength into the leg muscles in order to bend the knees so that there's a little bit of control and support upwards away from the knee joint. And then from there, we're going to just let the base of the spine at the tailbone move forwards. The waist and the sacrum will tend to follow that movement and then letting the tailbone move back towards the centre and then gently a little bit back. So again, the small of the back, the sacrum and the tailbone will all flow in that movement. And we're working for a gentle range of movement here and gradually trying to find a centred position. Key to finding an accurate centred position is that the crown of the head will be reaching up towards the ceiling as we're flowing through the base of the spine. So the back of the head and the back of the shoulders should be level, tailbone moving backwards and forwards, and eventually trying to find a position for the tailbone where it's directly beneath the crown of the head. From there, we try to open and lengthen through the whole spine, and we just hollow out a little bit in the lower abdomen, as if we were zipping up a pair of imaginary jeans that are rather too tight for us, and you have to pull back behind the zip as if each tooth pulls together, Imagine it's a little bit of a struggle and then as well we're going to draw back behind the imaginary blue fabric that we could just slide our fingers in between our jeans and our tummy there and we just have enough space. Then in addition to that we're going to squeeze our waist muscles in aiming to work that last layer of muscle circumference before the internal organs before the spine and that layer of muscles is going to be at the back of the waist at the sides of the waist and the front. And we can imagine those muscles working as if they were a belt, a belt cinching in around the waist so that it's pulling the waist in at the back and the sides and the front. So it might be a corset type belt or it might be an elasticated type belt that we would be able to imagine it squeezing in around the whole circumference of the waist. And then even though our waist is pulling in tightly as if the belt was squeezing it in, we're going to additionally imagine that we can pull our waist right away from the belt to create space between the belt and the waist so that we could run the fingers from the back to the sides to the front. So this type of engagement isn't just about pulling our tummy in at the front, in fact that doesn't really happen, it's about centering our waist strength around the spine. So the spine's a column and then we need to get this three-dimensional strength around the spine at the back, at the front and at two sides. So it's sort of four dimensions of strength, although we call it three dimensions. So then that fist distance, back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head level, lengthening up through our knees again, squeezing the ribs and the waist in, keeping the lower abdomen nice and strong. Then let's from there come into a little bit of a, a knee bend, so a plie action. And the idea within the plie action is that we're keeping the spine aligned. We need to, as we come down, absorb the movement into the muscles of the legs. And then squeezing back up, let your ribs squeeze in, waist squeeze in, zipping up the two tight jeans, pulling up through your bottom, pulling up through the front and the back of the thighs. We need to keep the weight really even through the feet as we come into this plie, centre of the heel, ball of the foot, pad of the little toe taking even weight coming back up, emphasising the core strength, then the gluteal strength, then the legs. So on this movement downwards, we're not just going with gravity, sinking into the mobility of the knees, but really activating the muscles in the back of our thighs to draw us down with control. We need to use a lot of centred strength around the waist to stay in our aligned spine position. Sense of keeping the ribs and the pelvis moving together as the spine lengthens through the centre. 
lots of strength through here, backside front, but also between. And although it's a small movement, we usually start to feel quite warm quite quickly. Let's work through four more. So an inhalation to move into the plie, exhalation to squeeze through the core, lower abdomen, gluteal muscles, thighs to come back. Breathing in plie, breathing out core, gluteal muscles, legs to return. Breathing in plie, exhalation to return, and a last time, and squeezing back up. We're going to work to still hold on to our alignment here, and then working into a rise. So with these rises in Pilates, the work's not intended so much to be in the calves, but really in the stabilization around the spine. So in order to do that, we need to ask each part of the body to really lift and support itself into the rise. So the ribs squeeze in tightly towards the spine, backsides in front, and it's as if the ribs are trying to lift away from the waist. And then the waist squeezes in backside in front, and it's as if the waist is trying to lift away from the hips. And then we're zipping up the two tight jeans and the gluteal muscles working, and it's as if the pelvis is lifting away from the thighs, pull up in the muscles in the backs of the thighs and the front, and then finally working into the calves, and finally working into the feet themselves. So there's lots and lots of strength through this part of the body. Now, if it's very challenging to hold your balance doing that, find something like a chair, for example, to give you support. There should be quite a lot of work around here, quite a lot of work in the backs of the legs and the gluteal muscles, some work as well, of course, in the, in the um, calves and the feet. So let's work through another four after this one. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. The last time, breathing in, breathing out, and releasing. Then, still maintaining our alignment, we're going to work the gluteal muscles, which turn our thigh bones out at the top, to rotate the legs at the hip joint, and allow that rotational action to travel down towards the knees and then into the ankles. So it's almost as though there's a little smile between the top of the thigh bone and the sitting bone. So you're trying to get the muscles to work through this line and coming back. The thigh muscles as well need to, from the sides to the back, wrap around and gradually pull forwards towards the inner thighs. And throughout the movement, we still need this pull up. The pull up of the zipping up of the jeans and the waist, the pulling up of the bottom and the backs of the thighs and the fronts of the thighs, then adding in the smile and wrapping the thigh muscles around. So it's lots and lots of strength. The rotational action overlays the work that we've already been doing. So that might be one reason for why it could feel quite hard. <laughs> So again, we've got this little smile, keep pulling the gluteal muscles up as if your sitting bones are going to arrive in your shoulder blades, keep lifting up through the backs of the thighs and the fronts of the thighs, and it's almost as if the muscles are being pulled forward here through the centre. Let's work through another, after these two, four. So it's going to breathe out and breathe in, breathe out and breathe in. Have to work very hard around the midsection to keep this neutral spine alignment. Keep working and fastening the belt. And then the last one, we pull up through the thighs and lead the inner thighs forwards. In theory now, the heels are together and the toes are just a little bit turned out. So it's not a dramatic turn out, just a gentle one. And then once again, we keep all of the same strength going that we've just worked in order to find this position with the turned out legs. And then into that, we're going to add a little bit of an elevation. The heels need to stay together, if we can, and the calves and the thighs. So it could be that maybe only your calves touch, um, the heels don't touch, but however much of the leg is touching as you arrive in the turned out position, you're going to keep it touching as we aim to get a little bit of a rise. So the rise comes again by pulling up through the center lifting up over the front of your spine, fastening the belt, keeping the ribs tight into the spine, lower abdomen working, gluteal muscles wrapping around and your thighs wrapping around but also pulling up. So centre, pull up through the centre, a piece of string is pulling you up through the crown of the head, 
elbow keeps moving downwards, lots of power in the core muscles, lifting you almost in a sense off your legs. Next work through, four more from here. So four and three and two and last one. Good, balance for a moment. And coming again. Good. Time to shake out our legs after all of that. Well done, everybody. Let's work a little bit more on the rotational action that we just had. And we're going to come back into that two fist distance apart at the feet, tailbone diving down, crown of the head moving up, zipping up the two tight jeans, squeezing the belt in really firmly and squeezing your waist away from the imaginary belt so that you've got lots of strength surrounding your spine. Transferring the weight then onto your preferred supporting leg. So for me at the moment, it's going to be the right leg because that's the way I'm turned, but it can be either leg. So bring the weight onto your preferred supporting leg. And as that happens, there might be a tendency for the pelvis to tip. So we need to work really hard in the muscles in the lower abdomen and around the waist to keep the pelvis as level as possible. The other leg lifts up by, again, this idea that the sitting bone is going to draw up towards your shoulder blade. So you're pulling up through the gluteal muscles, sort of lifting the leg from above, trying to almost hang it on the hook of your sitting bone. And then once again, the little smile. So the smile between the top of the thigh bone and the sitting bone to turn the leg out, breathe in to release. So again, drawing up, so if the sitting bone's going to arrive in the shoulder blade, adding in a smile, can wrap around from the back of the thigh to get this turn out and come back. So rotation and release. Exhalation and release. We need to keep really centering the core muscles at the front, at the back and at the sides so that we can keep lengthening the spine up. Keep the shoulders broad, pelvis broad, core muscles pull in, but the spine lengthens and the shoulders and the hips stay broad. So the action is really coming from here rather than from the knee. So rotate and release. Let's do four more. Breathing out, breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in. Rotate and release. Last time. Rotate and release, and then letting go. So of course we can do it freestanding as I just did it, or if it feels better, we can do it with a little bit of support. I'm going to stand on the other supporting leg now. So for me, that will be my left leg, but it's whichever one you prefer. And then again, finding the alignment. So tailbone diving down, crown of the head moving directly above the tailbone, Crest of the hip bones forwards, like headlight shining on your path. Back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head level. And using this three-dimensional strength at the front of the ribs, at the back of the ribs, and two sides. At the sides of the waist, and the back of the waist, and the front, everything pulling in an even amount. So we're really surrounding the spine with a cylinder of strength. Once again, we're going to transfer the weight onto the supporting leg. Keep drawing up through the thigh muscles at the front and the back on the supporting leg. Keep lifting up as if your sitting bone is going to arrive in your shoulder blade. And the core is going to have to work pretty hard in order to keep the pelvis level. So once again, we can, on this side, be drawing the muscles up around the hip as if the shoulder blade is going to arrive in the, sorry, as if the sitting bone's going to arrive in the shoulder blade and using the strength here to turn the leg out. So it's the gluteal strength. So we draw up through the gluteal muscles, lift as if the shoulder blade's, sitting bone's going to arrive in the shoulder blade and smile. The action starts at the hip joint and travels towards the knee joint. And the telltale sign that you're using that gluteal strength is that when you relax your gluteal muscles, the leg just comes straight back into the parallel position. So that's quite distinctive. The energy comes from the hip, travels from the gluteal muscles. The spine has to resist this outward movement to stay centered. And that's where your core strength is coming in. 
because the back could go with the work into the leg. That's what we're aiming to really resist having happen. So four to go again. Pulling up through the sitting bone, outside of the hip working, rotating, breathing into release. And again, rotate, breathing into release, and rotate, exhalation, breathing into release, and last one, and releasing. Well done. So again, that is quite a challenging exercise. It's worth it though, because it really targets those quite stubborn, hard to reach glutal muscles that we, uh, most of us do need to keep strong. We'll progress into another exercise which works the gluteal muscles but also the outside of the leg quite a bit. So once more coming back into that two fist distance apart between the heels, letting the crest of the hip bones be equally forwards, allowing the knees to bend, taking the effort that you need for that action into the backs of the legs, just check in with your feet, the weight should be even, centre of the heel, ball of the foot, pad of the little toe. If the weight's in the front of the foot, then the action has gone too much through gravity and through the mobility of the knee joint. And we need to keep that zipping up, the imaginary zipped up too tight jeans and drawing back away from the blue fabric of the jeans going, an imaginary tight belt around the waist or the corset, squeezing us in at the back and the sides and the front really firmly and allowing the muscles around the rib cage to also gather inwards. So we have a lot of core strength around the rib cage, as well as in the waist, as well as in the lower abdomen, and also in the upper back. So let your shoulder blades be wide and drawing down the back in the direction of your sitting bones. Let's transfer the weight onto a supporting leg. So you might be bringing your weight onto your left leg as your supporting leg, drawing up through the thigh muscles, and through the gluteal muscles on your supporting leg and then the action of raising your right leg is coming from the small of the back muscles weaving in and down towards the hip and the muscles in the back of the hip pulling up as if from the sitting bone towards the shoulder blade. So the idea of imagining your sitting bone pulling up towards your shoulder blade is that you go really deep into the gluteal muscles and the deep rotator muscles. It's a very strong action. And the inside of the leg is lengthening as the outside of the hip and the outside of the thigh are working. So core strength strong, supporting leg drawing up, keeping very strong, aiming to hold your pelvis as level as you can, effort on the exhalation each time, a last one, but this one we're going to hold and then place the foot to the floor. We're moving into a back squat plie where we need to, again, as we bend the legs, take the strength work of moving downwards into the muscles in the backs of the thighs. Support the pelvis up and off the thighs with a really powerful lift in the lower abdomen. And the spine is on a long trajectory up and out, remaining in neutral. Then we're going to exhale, rib squeeze in, waist squeezes in, zipping up the two tight jeans, transfer the weight back onto the supporting leg, outside leg is raised and close. So we can do it with support, exhalation to raise the leg, inhalation to move into the plie, keep your pelvis lifting up, your spine lifting up, really challenge your core strength to keep the spine in alignment, squeeze through the ribs, squeeze through the waist, transfer back and close. So if you prefer, again, freestanding. So the leg rises, breathing into your plie, squeeze out, squeeze through the ribs, then the lower abdomen, gluteal muscles and transfer. And last time, raising the leg through the um, lower back and hip muscles, inhalation into your plie, exhalation to squeeze back up, transfer your weight again and close. Good, that's the first side, and let's have a go on the second side. Quick posture check again. Feet placed, two fist distance apart, tailbone moving down, crown of the head directly above, hips, shoulders, back of head level. The two tight jeans, pulling back behind the blue fabric as well as behind the zip. Imaginary belt fastening, squeezing away from the belt, 
and the ribs squeezing in, funneling in towards the strength at the waist. Keeping your spine really tall, pelvis stays broad, shoulders stay broad, and your arm, if you're raising it, lengthens from out of the line of the collarbones. So we're trying to draw uh, strength down, weaving that small back, lower back strength towards the hip, and from the hip, pulling up as if the sitting bone is going to arrive in the shoulder blade and release. And the supporting side stays really long and tall. We need a lot of strength in this waist and a lot of strength in the hip on the supporting leg. We keep the work emanating from the pelvis, from the outside of the hip, then into the outside of the leg, then towards the foot. So it's not this action that's very different. It's this Pilates based leg raise action. This one we're going to hold out, ready to come into the plie, taking the weight into the, or the work and the weight into the muscles in the backs of the thighs, keeping the weight fairly even through the soles of the feet, squeezing back up, squeeze the ribs in, the waist, pelvis, gluteal muscles transfer and curls. So leg raise, plie, Spine on this trajectory up and out, pelvis lifting up and away from the thigh bones, using your core strength to keep your pelvis supported off your thigh bones. Breathing in, breathing out to squeeze back up and through. Last time, either with or without support, squeeze, plie, press up and out, core, gluteals, thighs transfer the weight again and close. Good, so that is a very challenging sequence both for the core muscles but also for the strength of the legs and in many ways if you're working without support for your entire balance so the leg stabilizes as well. I mentioned that we do a little bit of coordinated balance work and that's coming up now. So let's think about um, possibly our other supporting leg again. <laughs> we bring the support to the other side, using your left leg as your supporting leg to begin with. Once again, finding that aligned position with the crown of the head directly above the tailbone, pelvis floating at the base of the spine, the rib cage floating directly above the pelvis, head floating directly above that again. Zipped up imaginary two tight jeans, belt fastened nice and tightly, ribs nice and firm. So on this practice, we're going to let the leg, outside leg, move forwards and then to the side and then back and then back in line again. So it's coming forwards. As the leg comes forward, the pelvis needs to stay aligned. So the leg, of course, hips not coming as well. So leg moves forward. As the leg moves to the side, trying to keep the body as aligned as possible. And then the leg moves back. The hips go back a little, but not too much. So the pelvis will move uh, almost certainly for the majority of people, for me as well. But the aim of the exercise is to keep the pelvis and the base of the spine as much in alignment as possible. And if we feel comfortable with working without support, we can come away from the support. Let your arms lengthen out in line with the collarbone so there's lots of space between the shoulder and the ear. And then again, we tap forward, tap side, and tap back. And that tap forward, that tap side, and the tap back going to hold here and again either taking the support or not we're going to tap back and in again so stay in the direction that you're in and I'll just point out as the leg goes behind the line of the pelvis the line behind the line of the hip the lower back and the pelvis do need to move back a little bit but I'm working very hard with the strength at the front of my belt especially to avoid any very strong arching. I'm working here to hold this as long as I can. 
Now from here, you're still holding on with one side. If you want to, coming into a one-legged plie on the supporting leg. Keep the pelvis lifting up off the supporting thigh, using your deep core strength in the lower abdomen. Support your waist from edge of your waist and your rib cage from the muscles around the ribs and with the shoulder blades wide and moving down the back. And then one leg taps back and then forward. So the action is tap back and then forwards. And this can work with support or without. So the leg taps back, reach in and come back. Reach in and come back. And each time you're reaching, renew your core strength and lengthen your spine. Even if you're holding on, you can manage with one arm or if you're upright and you're not in your plie, you can always go like this, which will make it harder. Let's do a last two, everybody. So two, and then one, and come back, and extend. Good. Let's look at that same sequence <clears throat> also on our other side. <coughs> so, nice and tall, supporting support to the other side this time. Weight even, centre of the heel, ball of the foot, pad of the little toe, imagine you zipped up to your tight jeans, belt fastened, squeezing the waist away from the belt, muscles working around the rib cage, funneling in towards your waist strength, shoulder blades broad and wide, and lengthening up between the tailbone and the crown. So the outside arm can move off to the side. As we transfer weight onto one leg, we're going to have to prepare that supporting leg quite a lot, pull up through the front of the thigh, back of the thigh, and as well lift up through the inner thigh. It's as if your sitting bone is going to lift up into your shoulder blade on this supporting leg side, and the waist has to squeeze in really very strongly. So the leg taps forward, keeping the pelvis in position, leg taps to the side, trying to keep the pelvis as level as you can, uh, right side, left side, and the leg taps back, trying to keep this as strong as possible so very little arching. So tap forward, tap side, tap back and together, tap forward, tap side, tap back and together. So again, if you prefer to be freestanding, you can and lengthen that leg that's traveling. Keep stretching it away from you. You really lengthen your spine upwards in one direction, away from the leg and lengthen the leg in the opposite direction. So this is where we're going to begin to maintain the tap back. And where we've thought about on the first side that we need to keep the strength working very powerfully between the ribs and the pelvis. Aim to use your core strength here that although your leg is going back and your tailbone moves back a little bit, there's a sense of lengthening upwards throughout the movement into the crown of the head. If you feel strong enough and if your knee feels all right, we're going to come into a one-legged plie with the supporting leg, absorb the work into the back of the leg, think about how the weight is distributed in the sole of the supporting foot. It should be even, heel, ball of foot, pad of the little toe, and if it isn't, you haven't put enough work into the thigh muscles coming down, and really, you need to, to keep the pressure off the knee. Out breath to reach back, in breath to come in. So you can still continue with an extended leg, a straight leg, Still at your exhalation, squeeze the ribs in, squeeze the waist in. Lower abdomen working. Arm can reach through. Or both arms reach through. Let's work the last four here. So four. Keep renewing your core strength and lengthening your spine at the heart of the movement every time. Two. And last one, breathe out. Breathe in to come back. And releasing from that exercise as well. Good, well done. <laughs> That's got us through all of our warm-up exercises. If you're going to follow on to do some mat-based Pilates work with me, then um, there's no need to stretch now. But if you're not going to do that, um, then I think it would be a good idea to just a little bit stretch your hamstrings. So sending one leg out in front and hinging at the hips. Just thinking about how you need to work the muscles around your back to keep your spine lengthening in this position. 
Allow your shoulders to keep moving away from your ears into your shoulder blades, then the back behind you. Breathing away. And then let's come up and away from that position. And let's go through on the other side. Again, nice and even start position, hips even weight on the chair and then hinging at the hip, coming forward, keeping the spine as long as possible. Abdominal muscles still lifted, shoulders drawing away from the ears. How can you both lengthen your spine here and lengthen the back of the leg? What needs to happen? Good. And then again, lifting up and away from that. If you are able to cross your legs and you don't have any contraindications against crossing your legs, we can stretch a little bit in the outer thigh by crossing one leg over the other. And again, letting the spine lengthen as we move forward. So you should feel in the outside of the upper leg and into the gluteal muscles on the upper leg. A little bit of a stretch there. Breathing. And then as well, just lift up and away from that. And we uncross the legs, bringing the other leg over. Now, if you are not supposed to cross your legs, and instead come forwards. Get this nice long stretch with the legs staying in a parallel position. So we cross the leg over, abdominal muscles nice and strong. Just check that the weight's still even through both sitting bones before coming forwards. And again, we should feel that stretch really through the outside of this leg and into the outside of the hip on that side. Let the shoulders draw away from the ears and remembering to breathe. <laughs> Keep breathing. Still breathing. And then once again, as you're ready, let's just lift up and release from there. We hinge forward just a little bit, again, starting with our long spine that we've been practicing with. Let's hollow powerfully in the lower abdomen, squeeze the sides of the waist and the front of the waist in to roll through the spine and let your head and neck follow the line of the rest of the spine and then from the tailbone upwards and outwards through the spine into the crown releasing and growing once again that powerful lift in the lower abdomen sides of the waist and the front of the waist come in and we round and then roll through so all of this movement coming from the core muscles not really from the arms or pressing into the arms but it's useful to have them there for support just in case and the last time rolling and we lengthen there. We bring ourselves back to upright. Let's just bring you back up to standing. Take a nice diagonal stretch, reach up, reach down, and releasing. Nice diagonal stretch, reach up, reach down, and releasing. Let's breathe in and breathe out three times. Breathe in and breathe out. And the last time, get to stretch and give everything a shake out, letting go and finish. Well done if you've made it all the way through with me on this um, little workout, Pilates based workout or Pilates based warm up. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you.